What's going on guys? Today we're looking at the huge trade that went down yesterday. Pittsburgh trading Patrick Hornfist to the Florida Panthers in exchange for Mike Masson and Colton Cedior. Obviously you know it's a huge trade when it takes like three days to process. I'm sure Penguins fans are really hoping Hornfist was going to not waive his no trade clause or no move clause, whatever it is he has. Unfortunately for them though, uh, the trade did go through. It kind of even maybe got worse adding Cedior as I feel like he's just a body essentially. He'll probably just play fourth line for the Penguins. And I feel like they already had enough forwards to fill that role, but who knows, maybe he'll prove me wrong. So. I'll take a look at this trade in game and see both teams considered a contender. I don't know about that one. I guess they both did lose in the qualifying round this year, but I feel like the Penguins are definitely a much better team. So I'll start with Florida here, adding Mike Matheson. Um, in games, 25 years old, 81 overall, medium top four potential. As he did have like one decent year, got paid. It hasn't really been the best since. Um, 4.8 million there for seven years. So real life it's actually six, but either way, it's a big contract. Um, kind of like just an applicator I feel in Detroit. He got paid after a decent season. And even after that season was probably still paid too much. And after his drop and play, definitely paid too much. It was actually a first round pick back in 2012, the 23rd pick. Uh, if you look at his stats here, he's actually like not too bad in terms of scoring for defensemen. 27 points in both 17, 18, and 18, 19. But kind of a turnover machine. Isn't that sound defensively? Kind of plays a dirty game, some people think too. And just a big contract, I feel, for what you're getting in him. And I don't, I don't know why uh, Jim Rutherford made this trade. You no, know, Pittsburgh fans are just absolutely just pissed off with him and I, I can see why really and so like I was saying Sevior in game he's 30 78 making 1.2 million for two years again that's one year like I said I feel like Penguins already have some guys that can fill this role whether it be like Dominic Simon, Blue Jer, um, there's probably some other guys I'm missing or even a guy who's already in the HL right now I'm, I feel like someone could fill that role and just you know save 1.2 million in cap space for them now the Florida Panthers here get back Patrick Hornquist. Patrick Hornquist obviously isn't like an all-star or anything anymore, but I feel like he's still a capable player. Uh, he's gonna be 33 now, 82 overall, toxic potential. Also got a bit of a hefty contract there, just over five million for four years. It's actually three. Um, I feel like in real life, Hornquist at this point is probably more of an 82. Uh, Matson's probably like a high 70s. So you're essentially trading an older, low 80 forward for a younger, high 70 defenseman. Um, thing is, Hornquist's contract, although it is like an extra 400k, is three years shorter. So I think that's kind of the big thing here. Um, no cap retention from either side. Pittsburgh could have too many skaters. Okay, so we're gonna have to add somebody who just doesn't matter uh, to make sure this is, you know, as realistic as possible. Nyberg here is on the block, so hopefully I don't care about me adding him. Um, look at the value you can see, it's still on Pittsburgh's side. Uh, medium difficulty here, I feel like they're definitely gonna say no. Trade is rejected, yeah. I think. In game, it's definitely closer than it should be. I think in real life, Pittsburgh wins this one by a lot. In game, it looks like they have just a slight edge of the Penguins. So after that trade, guys, here's an update look at the Panthers roster. First forward line there, you got Huberdeau, Barkov, Achari. I'm actually using the daily face-off line, so hopefully they're accurate. Uh, Dadnov, Walmart, Hoffman on the second line, Hornfist, Halla, Conley on the third, and then Borgstrom, Boyle, and Vitrano on the fourth. I got Hornfist plugged in as a third liner, but honestly, he might be a second for them as both Hoffman and Dadnov are pending UFAs. I feel like one of those guys, if not both, are definitely going to get paid in free agency by some other team. Personally, I feel like it'll probably be Hoffman that leaves, but I feel like Dadnov's probably going to stay in Florida. Also, too, Halla and Boiler both pending UFAs. I feel like both could go to free agency, both could potentially stay. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see who the Panthers are able to keep. Right now, their six defensemen are Uyghur, Ekblad, Strawman, Stillman. Yandel and Pishik. Pishik was actually playing forward for them sometimes, so I feel like without Mastin, he's got to go back to D. But he's also playing UFA, so he might not be back with the team either. Uh, Yandel, obviously, very good offensive defenseman. And Stillman here, I feel, is definitely underrated at a 71. 21 years old. He's got to be at least like a high 70. Um, Strollman there is not bad. Ekblad's, you know, still their number one defenseman. Uyghur's not too bad either. Then, of course, in goal, you got Bobrovsky. If he doesn't turn around next year, I don't know what's going to happen. 30 years old, still has six years left, because remember, you got a minus a year at $10 million. Um, hopefully, just like a one bad year from in Florida, but not looking good. And next year, guys, we're going to try to trade as the Penguins. As you can see, the Florida Panthers actually want Hornquist. I feel like one trade that they could have done, uh, especially if the Panthers did well in real life, is just trade him for like a second or a third rounder. Second might be a bit much, but a third rounder. In game, EA for sure thinks the Panthers are getting the better deal, but in real life, because of his age and contract, I feel like Hornquist for a third's not too bad. The fans would kind of understand it, it's a cap dump, but taking back an overpaid defenseman, um, who's just a worse player, I think, in terms of one to one when compared to Hornquist, is what made the Penguins fans upset, and I think rightfully so. So, 
Matson and Steve York here. Uh, we'd be over the max salary cap. I actually just went and traded Bukestad to the Minnesota Wild for a seventh round pick. Damon retained 50% on Bukestad, and they still said yes, value was way in our favor. That's a trade I feel like they could not a little bit better on. I mean, Bukestad at $2 million has to be worth more than free because it's a conditional seventh, too. He has to hit like 30 points or play 70 games. There's like tons of teams, like Ottawa with tons of cap. Bukestad could easily be like a solid third line signer for them. I don't know how you don't get, especially at $2 million, a fourth, fifth round pick. So just another not really great trade in my opinion by Jim Rutherford, but um, next year we'll try Hornquist for Mastin and Steve Yor. The value again is pretty close. Uh, somehow it looks closer here, or it's because we're not adding that guy on our side. So honestly, even though they want Hornquist, Florida might say no, in which case EA thinks that this trade was fair if both teams reject. We'll see what happens. Oh, it is accepted. Okay, so uh, that does confirm that they think Florida did get the better trade, although just slightly, we're in real life, I think. Uh, for to kind of fleece them. And next year, guys, we're taking a look at the Penguins roster. Obviously, not really sure what's gonna happen to the Lions for next season, but it's kind of my best guess here. So we got Gensel, Crosby, and Sherry playing on the top line. Rust, Malkin, Zucker on the second. Uh, Bluger, McCann, Kapanen on the third. I could definitely see Kapanen uh, somewhere in that top six, though, especially after they gave up a first round pick for him. Uh, I got Aston Reese, Simon Tanev as the fourth line for forwards. Uh, they're all 79 plus. If you look in game, Seaboard is only a 78. So, like I was saying, I really think like adding him to the trade actually made it worse for the Penguins. Like, I think without that, the original trade was actually better. Um, you'll see I actually have Schultz Scratch too. I don't really think he's going to be coming back to the Penguins. Um, he would have to take like, I don't know, $5 million. That'd be about all their cap. And I feel like he can probably get a bit more than that in free agency. Uh, so defense without Schultz. You got Dumoulin Latang top pair. Marino Peterson probably as their second. And then Mastin Johnson on the bottom pair. Good news for Penguins fans. Mastin and Johnson both get a plus three there. Unfortunately, though, you're paying them, what, uh, about $8 million there for your bottom D pair who's going to play like eight minutes a night. I don't know about that. Now, goaltending, you still have Murray as a starter, most likely on his way out. I am curious what the return will be for him. I'm thinking like a couple seconds, kind of in that range. Uh, Jerry there probably takes over as a starter. If he continues to play like he did this season, they'll be fine. Thing is, there's no certainty with goaltending. Like, he could regress. So, um, hopefully, though, that's not the case for Penguins fans. Um, that's me, guys, for this video again. Wasn't really going to do it, and then much you were asking for it. So as you can see, in-game, uh, Panthers still win it, but EA has it a lot closer than I think it is in real life. And as always, guys, love to hear your thoughts in the comments section. Do any of you actually think that the Penguins won this trade and Masson and Steve York in exchange for Horn Fist? Also, if you guys did enjoy this one, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.